Good afternoon, dear friends. Today we will continue our serial of webinars, and today we will talk about drug-induced neuropathy, drug-induced peripheral neuropathy, and neurotoxicity drug. Uh, this topic, uh, I received uh, <coughs> questions, and one of my colleague asked me if it possible provide uh, uh, this information. She is a medical doctor, she is a neurologist, and she asked uh, this information for practical activity. Uh, for people, uh, for our new participants, I want to uh, introduce myself. My name is Galina Cordero, I am QPPV, Head of Pharmacovigilance Department, DCK Pharma, Clinical Expert with Scientific Research Background. When we talk about neurotoxicity, we should understand that it's uh, several levels of influence uh, drugs in central uh, nervous system and peripheral nervous system. We today we will talk about the make extent in peripheral nervous system, and another part I will uh, continue. It will be about antibiotic neurotoxicity. Uh, next part will be about hema. Uh, uh, hemotherapy, uh, cancer drugs, and uh, influence and effect on nervous system. Afterwards, uh, I will prepare cardiotoxicity uh, presentation drugs and how manage it because I received many questions about this topic too. Uh, concerning non-neurotoxicity drugs. Uh, it includes drugs to treat autoimmune disease such as etanercept, infliximab, lefronamide, drugs to treat infections such as uh, chloroquinine, isoniazid, you will remember that isoniazid has effect not just um, uh, nervous system influence, but and uh, for liver injury, metronidazole, nitrofurantoin, talidomide, drugs to treat HIV infections such as didanazine, stavudine, uh, zalcitabine. And uh, <coughs> when we talk about condition drug induced neuropathy generally, it's a uh, is a potentially serious complication caused by certain medication resulting in the loss of movement and cessation in certain parts of the body. In this condition, individual experience sensory nerve irregulatory sensory neuropathy, numberness and tinglings in the hands and feet, and muscle weakness. Drug induces neuropathy is caused by the toxicity of certain medications resulting in damage to the nerve cells. An individual in more uh, at risk for developing drug induced neuropathy if medications that are potentially toxic to the body are used, or if there is a known metabolic or genetic predisposition to certain drugs. Treatment of drug-induced neuropathy involves uh, cessing the use of causative medication. Pain relievers may be administered to manage the symptoms. New therapies are currently in clinical trials to treat this condition. Individuals with drug-induced neuropathy usually have improved nerve function after appropriate treatment. The outlook is generally good with suitable treatment. Any associated complications are also known to subside quickly. Drug-induced neuropathy is a potential serious complication due to the toxicity of certain medications. It can affect individuals of all ages and both genders, males and females. However, some individuals may have a genetic predisposition for this condition and may be more vulnerable to the condition than others. There is no specific racial, ethnic or geographic predilection of the observed. The common thing, uh, things and symptoms of drug and use neuropathy include numbness, tingliness of abnormal sensation in the hands and or feet, loss of sensation, muscle weakness, 
Sensation changed beginning in the hands and feet and moving in towards the body. The things and symptoms due to drug-inducing neuropathy can vary in severity from one individual to individual. Some individuals may have mild symptoms, while others several symptoms. A diagnosis of drug-induced neuropathy may involve a complete physical examination and assessment of the signs and symptoms, screening of the individual's medical history, including medication history, test to, to check the level of the medication in blood, neurological testing on nerve condition studies to test nerve conducated in order to determine the extent of neuropathy, muscle testing such as an electromyography. Many clinical conditions may have similar signs and symptoms. Your health care provider may perform additional tests to rule or out other clinical conditions to arrive at a definitive diagnosis. Complication of drug-induced neuropathy. It can include constant uh, tingling and numbness in the area surrounding the affected nerves, permanent loss of sensation due to permanent nerve damage, moderate to severe pain in specific areas of the body. This can affect the quality of life. It can be serious influence on uh, patients because it's bad quality of life this life can be impossible. Drug-induced neuropathy treatment. The treatment for drug-induced neuropathy is determined based on the severity of the symptoms and may include the following. Reducing the dosage of the causative medication, switching to a less toxic medication, substitute pain relievers such as over-the-counter drugs, opiates, and antidepressants. Limiting activities to prevent injury from a lost sensation. Prognosis for drug-induced neuropathy, outcomes and resolutions. The prognosis of drug-induced neuropathy is good with adequate treatment and management of the signs and symptoms. In general, drug-induced neuropathy is not a life-threatening condition. The neuropathy typically subsides when the causative drug is lowered in dosage or is discontinued. A complete nerve function may take several months or for the condition to return to normal. However, permanent nerve damage is possible in several cases. Now we will pay attention and we will talk about drug-induced peripheral neuropathy. And I will pay attention on neurotoxicity drugs which can cause this condition. It can be anti-alcohol drugs such as disulfiram, drugs for lowering blood pressure such as amiodarone, hydralazine, perhexaline, uh, per drugs to treat cancer such as cisplastine, vincristine, paclitaxel, anticonvulsant drugs such as phenytoin, and drugs to treat skin condition such as dapsone. Drug-inducing peripheral neuropathies, uh, shortly it can call it DIPNS, are uncommon, but with the number of new drugs increasing, unusual side effects may not become apparent until after widespread usage. Certain medications have been implicated in the heterogeneous development of drug-inducing peripheral nephropathy DIPN, and include hemotherapeutic agents, antimicrobials, cardiovascular drugs, psychotropic, anticonvulsants, among others. Hemotherapy induces peripheral nephropathy CIPNs are major and dose limiting side effects of many anti cancer treatments, and other characteristics are often related to both the choice of anti cancer drugs and the cumulative dos doses. Toxic DIPNs and CIPNs may appear as length of non-length dependent neuropathies with or without small fiber, 
involvement and discussion about grading the severity and early detection of neuropathies are still open. Drug-induced for peripheral nephropathy occurs when a chemical substance causes damage to peripheral nervous system. DAPNs is potentially irreversible, resulting in sensory deficits and paresthesia, typically in glow and stalking type distribution. Motor involvement is rare. The onset of signs and symptoms usually takes week to months as those dependent on set requires neurotoxins to build up a, peak, a rich peak concentration in the bloodstream. The neurotoxins can affect and modify both peripheral nerves and glial cells through a variety of mechanisms with rising neurotoxin levels, axonal distal degeneration occurs not dissimilar to the demyelinated process. DIPN accounts for only 4% of all neuropathies, yet 60% of patients undergoing chemotherapy will, de uh, will develop DIPN. For toxic neuropathies, no real therapeutic breath Throws, but some interest in new insight in pathological are available. Adequate animal models and pharmacogenic data are important for future advancement in toxic neuropathies. Functional assessment for early detection is necessary with using potentially neurotoxic therapy. Molecular mechanisms of peripheral neuropathy include uh, uh, drug incitotoxic inflammatory changes, metatoxicity and enhanced oxidative stress, microtubular function disruption, voltage gated ion channel dysfunction, functional impairment of ion channels or the transient receptor potential TRP family. Induction of neuronal apoptosis in DRG demyelinization and reduction of VAGF, VG, VAGF neuroprotective action. Inflammation. Inflammation. Its endoneural macrophage infiltration and subsequent secretion of pro inflammatory inflammatory cytokines, tumor necrosis factor alpha TNFA, interleukin 1 beta, interleukin 6 and interleukin 8, and hemokines CC modify ligand 2, CTL2, CXT family, growth factors and inflammatory mediators such as bradykinin, prostaglandin, serotonin, and nitric oxide have been correlated with acute and chronic neuropathic pain in human CIPN or in patients receiving highly active antiretroviral therapy agents. In animal models, overexpression of matrix metalloproteinases mediating merely internal as phenotypic remodeling of glial and neuronal cells, as well as secondary activation of inflammatory cascades, have been recently reviewed. In some DPNs, medication induced immune perturbation presumably triggers a disimmune attack directed or at identified peripheral nerve myelinate epitopes. True peripheral nerve toxicity depending on accumulative dose of serum levels play not identified role. TNFA blocking molecules and other immunomodulatory immunosuppressive of antiaplastic agents widely used to treat several forms of inflammatory diseases have been associated with disimmune condition including various forms of demyelinated neuropathies. Intracellular inflammation can be seen in both hemotherapy-induced peripheral nephropathy and HIV-induced peripheral neuropathy. The inflammation from hemotherapy drugs is linking to organelle damage and apoptotic death of the neuronal cell, leading to an overall inflammatory state in the nerve. HIVS interaction with GP120 induces 
boost inflammation and activation of the complement cascade, damaging dorsal root ganglia and leading to neuronal cell death. Mitochondrial toxicity and oxidative stress. Mitochondrial toxicity and oxidative stress, the recently discovered mechanism of metatoxicity, include a link between abnormal opening of the mitochondrial permeability, transition pore, uh, anti a mitochondrial calcium leak and a secondary organelle swelling leading to neuronal hyperaccessibility. Disruption of mitochondrial electron transport chain in inflammatory induced neuropathic pain with demonstration that inhibition of the METC complexes can counteract didoxiditin and TNF inducing neuropathic pain. Enhancing oxidative stress with impairment is the mediating respiration complex following the administration of uh, paclitaxel, doxetaxel, incristine, oxaliplatin, and bartizamide causing secondary production of inflammatory cytokines. Oxidative stress may be particularly important based on the significant correlation between the glutathione S transferase P1 enotype and the development of more several of early onset CIPN following doxycetyl administration. Ion channel dysfunction of the peripheral nerve VC VGICAs has been advocated as potential cause of DIPN. Sodium oxaliplatin induced neuropathy has been suggested from human ex vivo and animal models to be her hyper excitability secondary to an altered state of the voltage gated sodium channel and particular the channel NIV 1.6 this result have led to the experimental use of sodium channel blockers in animal disease models. Potassium other authors using cellular models of oxaliplatin induced neuropathy have now noted that dysfunction of the voltage gated potassium channel may also be associated with nerve hyperexcitability. Calcium alteration in voltage rated calcium channel current in the red DRG interfering with calcium homeostasis have been associated with CAPN, especially with, with transient receptor potential our channels, TRP channel, are a group of ion channels widely expressing in neuronal sensory DRG and trigeminal ganglia neurons and in non-neuronal cells located mainly in the plasma membrane. They are rather non selectively permeable to sodium, calcium, and magnesium, and mainly involving in transduction of a variety of painful of thermal stimuli. Several members of this family of receptors have been linked to DIPN, mainly secondary oxaliplatin and paclitax cells through the mechanism of oxidative stress generation. This includes TRP vanilloid, TRP V uh, capsaicin receptors 2, 3, 4, and 8, mental receptors and ankyrin 1, TRP HI platinum compounds and taxonase. Transient receptor potential ion channels, TRP channels, I group of ion channels widely expression in neuronal sensory DRG trigeminal ganglion neurons and non-neuronal cell located mainly in plasma membrane. They were rather non-selectively permeable to sodium, calcium and magnesium and may be drawn in the transduction and variety and painful or thermal stimuli. Axonal transport defects occur via interaction of microtubule depolarization with organelle damage induced by drugs such as paclitaxel, cisplastin, and borizamide. Borizamide prolongs proteasome inhibition in addition to increasing alpha tubulin polymerization, which results in the death of rapidly divided cells. General 
parties may resolve from microtubular polymerization interference and subsequent calcium channel dysregulation. Sodium channels are also subject to interference by several drugs. Oxaliplatin, for instance, increases sodium currents and prolongs the cell's refractory period while having no effect on potassium channels. A painful sensor neuropathy has been associated with the GF neutralizes antibodies, for example, bevacizumab uh, or VGF receptors inhibitor, sorafenib, sunifitib uh, from animal ma uh, models, which are usually administered in combined hemotherapy regimes. This involves disruption of the neuroprotective effects of VGP leading to neuronal stress and apoptosis rolls a mechanism involving VGF receptor 2 mediated expression and anti-apoptotic protein BCL2. In another setting, mefloquine an efficient therapeutic option for drug resistant plasmodium falciparum malaria is associated with a clinical well described but pathophysiologically poorly understood neurotoxicity. A recent study linked Mefloquinin to a down regulation of non receptor tyrosine kinase P, uh, P e, e, K2 involved in ion channel regulation throws activation on the MEP kinase signaling pathway, ultimately leading to oxidative injury and apoptosis. Pharmacogenetic susceptibility, pharmacogenetic variation in absorption, distribution, metabolism, elimination, and DNA repair mechanism have been postulated to explain differences in the absorbed neurotoxicity of various molecules. For instance, polymorphism on the gene encoding ABCB1 cycloprotein, uh, glycoprotein 1 of the transporters involved in the elimination of numerous exonebiotic substances have been suggested to particularly, particularly explain the var variability of texan inducing DIPN. Similarly, genetic variants of proteins involved in the metabolism of xenobiotics, for example, cytochrome 385, have been linked to increased risk of DIPN in children receiving lincristine. Likewise, increasing susceptibility to peripheral neurotoxicity after exposure to offending agents has been associated with the polymorphism in genes involved in the following pathway. Hemotherapy induced in DNA pro-adex repair, immune function detail for CTSS, reflexive coupling with the Schwann cells, G, uh, GJE1, drug binded PCMB1 and neuron function TCF1, apoptosis, mitochondrial dysfunction, inflammation, and oxidative stress, scavenger such as lutathione transferase 1. You can see neuronal targets of drug induced per uh, peripheral neuropathy. You can see uh, what can uh, suffer from. It can be in spinal cord, it can be sympathetic ganglion, it can be nerve, it can be sensor fiber, it's motor fiber, and nerve fiber. And you see how it can be working. Uh, if in real life in patient. Uh, now we will talk about neurotoxic drug purity mechanism potential ma uh, management. Uh, we talked about uh, pathophysiological why mechanism because knowing it you can understand on which mechanism you can influence for uh, management this situation. For example, metatoxicity and oxidative stress it can be cause of ciplastin, RTS, tacrolimus, paclitaxel, uh, bortezamide, uh, platinum compounds. And you see how it can be treated. And uh, mm, the situation, uh, majority cases meeting neuro a neurologist uh, because uh, this uh, neurological pathology, but uh, this situation can uh, meet an uh, 
every specialist why because uh, every specialist can treat for example counter drugs uh, when they have this uh, pathology or for example um, antibiotics we will talk about uh, neurotoxicity in uh, this antibiotics in next selection and uh, how uh, how manage this situation uh, microtubular function disruption sodium channels is uh, influent and uh, Pa clitoxel, epitelonus, oxyplastin involves dysfunctional therapy family of iron channels and carine therapy is on which mechanism tools it's working. Pa clitoxel and no having this knowledge, you can manage this situation. Use it in practical activity. On this uh, slide, you can see how uh, bortezomib uh, make uh, this uh, pathological condition, peripheral ne nephropathy, and toxins and vinyl alkaloids. Uh, for example, uh, when we're talking about uh, uh, mechanism, you should know uh, pathophysiology and know on pathonatomy and pharmacology. Plus, it's a uh, new knowledge because combine its knowledge with uh, clinical pharmacology with clinical pharmacovigilance can um, manage this condition and uh, manage risk and minimize the uh, risk of uh, uh, development of this uh, adverse uh, reaction uh, in this case it's is peripheral neuropathy sketch map of the mechanism of hemotherapy induced in peripheral neuropathy the Depiction of the typical symptom starts for CAPN toxicity is a peripheral nervous system de depicted from the distal nerve terminals, toxinal components, myelin, microtubules, mitochondrial ion channels, and vascular networks, the dorsal rule, ganglia, DRG, and central nervous system. TAPN was initiated and progressed by the hemotherapeutic agents rules, intraepidermal nerve fibers, impairment, abnormal spontaneous discharge, activation of ion channels, up regulation of nerve immune system, oxidative stress, and the abnormal kinase activation in drug and CNS central nervous system. Content in the blue boxes refer to different hemotherapy agents. Solid dots refer to the target of relative hemotherapeutic agents. Content in the pink boxes refer to the pathological progress is powerful and central nervous system underlying CAPN. You see it's anti-tumor drugs, they induce CAPN as a mechanism of underlying CAPN. Anti-tumor drugs that induce CAPN and main mechanism underlying CAPN. GLT-1 glutamate transporter valve, glass glutamate aspartate transporter, GABA, amino butric acid, uh, get GABA transporter to like receptor, glutamate, parixotelvin, cysteine, oxyplatine, cisplatine, bartizamide, voltage jaded sodium channels, voltage jaded calcium channels, voltage gated potassium channels, Channels. It's uh, what uh, make possible this development of uh, this pathological condition, peripheral uh, neurop uh, neuropathy. And you see that inflammation play a uh, role too, and um, uh, role of NO synthase, uh, nitric oxide, oxide synthase, and uh, inf inflammation, interleukin, it's uh, uh, one, you remember, six, eight, uh, and tumor necrosis factors and plus TR notify containing protein 1, 1 and not plus nicotinamide adenine uh, dinucleotide. Diagnosis of drug induced 
peripheral neuropathy, the diagnosis of DIPN remains a diagnosis of exclusion mainly based on the patient history. The clinicians need to consider DIPN especially in the setting of recent initiation of drug known to cause neuropathy, such as hemosurotypic agent. As stated previously, patients typically present with parasitosis, token globe distribution week to months after starting a new drug regimen. Interestingly, risk factors for DAPN vary by individual drug. For instance, risk of DAPN with brentuxinab does not increase with factors such as sex, age, diabetes mellitus, BMI, or prior underlying neuropathy. Taxan induced peripheral neuropathy on others can demonstrate increases risk with demographic factors such as age, neuropathy, and baseline smoking diabetes. DAPN, while mainly in clinical diagnosis, will exhibit an anoxal pattern of damage of both motor and sensory nerve conduction studies. Now we will talk again uh, from uh, class-specific effect. We will go uh, to uh, drugs, for example, uh, cardiovascular agents. It's uh, like class-specific cardiovascular medicines. If we will talk about uh, amiodarone. Amiodarone is this a class 3 antiarrhythmic used to prevent numerous arrhythmial of arterial and ventricular origin. Also, the medication has several nose adverse effects on lungs, thyroid and eye. Peripheral neuropathy has not been characterized to the same degree. A recent study examined amiodarone use and 400 45,533 patients found the incident rate of peripheral neuropathy to be 2.38 per 1,000 person years. A previously study of 7307 amiodarone treating patients noted only two patients who experienced peripheral neuropathy. The greatest risk factors were found to include increased dose and duration of therapy. This affected patient exhibited both sensory and motor deficits. Previous investigation of amiodarone induced peripheral neuropathy attributed such deficits to both demyelination and axonal loss with lysosomal inclusions. Recent findings have also characterized the generative process, suggesting the contribution on an enhanced oxidative stress and impaired lysosomal degradation with Schwann cells, an additional component to the neuronal pathogenesis. The pathogenesis of statin induced, we will talk now about statin induced peripheral nephropathy, is not well understood. Current theories surmise that the inhibition of cholesterol synthesis and alteration of a membrane function with a nerve disruption ubiquinone synthesis subsequently disturbing energy utilization with neurons. While clinical data has shown statins to be neuropathic pain induction, preclinical data has shown statins to be neuropathic pain attenuated, possibly attributing to cholesterol independent inhibition of the inflammatory cascade and free radical generation. While the significant cardiovascular benefit of statins that appears to outweigh the risk of peripheral neuropathy development, further research is needed to better understand the pathogenesis and clinical manifestation. Characteristic of cardiovascular agent relating DAPN, we will talk about now, talked about two uh, drugs is statin and amamidarone. The agent group statin uh, drug dosage increase the treatment duration cumulative dose association with increasing polyneuropathy relative risk. Incidence odds rate 1.2.4.6. Risk factor duration of treatment more than two years. Pathogenesis alteration of a membrane function disruption of a we know synthesis and energy utilization in nerves, primary sensory neuropathy, uh, its neuropathy type. Amiodarone, uh, 
uh, drug dosage more than uh, 200 milligram has high associations with DIPN. Uh, two from 700 cent patient to uh, point 38 uh, on 1,000 person years. Uh, risk factors is increased dose length of drug therapy, pathogenesis, demyelinization, loss of large axons with lysosomal inclusions, oxidative stress and uh, impaired nerves, sensory and motoric neuropathy part and it um, uh, has chronic character. Uh, hemotherapeutic agents, zinc alkaloids. Uh, zinc alkaloids. Uh, we will talk about hemotherapeutic agents now. A uh, hemotherapeutic use for the treatment of hematologic, lymphatic, gynecologic malignancies, as well as solid tumors. Among this class of therapies, increasing is associated with greatest incidence of neurotoxicity. Also, studies has also reported DAPN in patients treated with venerenalbine and venblastine. In afflicted patients, the neuropathy typically manifests in the distal lower extremities and progresses proximally. Changes in sensation are characterized by decreases touch, vibration and temperature sensation as well as prosthesia and diminished deep tendon reflexes. Higher single dose and copulative drug concentration are predictive risk factors for the developers of DAPN. Uh, drug-induced peripheral nephropathy, but the incidence varies widely due to the lack of standardized patient assessment and gradient of severity. In pediatric population, study report is higher as 96% uh, of patients develop in some degree of vinca inducing DAPN with incidence rated ranging from 0 to 37% for grade 3 or 4. While the pathogenicity is not yet fully understood, the proposed mechanism suggests a polymerization dysfunction with oxonal microtubules as a contributory mechanism. Hemotherapeutic agents platinum. All platinum hemotherapeutics are characterized by chronic sensory neuropathic effects via accumulation in the dorsal root ganglion with an incidence of 30-40% in patients treated with oxaliplatin and cisplatin. Risk related to higher cumulative dosing and the cost and phenomena may be absorbed as effects tend to worsen the months after stopping treatment. In addition to the long-term manifestation, oxaliplatin is also associated with acute cold-inducing neuropathic pain. The mechanism of chronic pathogenesis is dysplastic involves damage to dorsal root, sensory neurons mediated by by irreversible cross-linking to DNA and neuronal apoptosis, while the acute toxicity seen with ox oxaliplatin is attributed to voltage-dependent sodium channel dysfunction. Hemotherapeutic agent bortezomib, thalidomide, uh, everybody remember Talinamid tragedy when uh, this drug was administration in Europe for pregnant ladies, uh, females and uh, kids, children from this uh, females were born without extremities or with short extremities and big tragedy for for Europe and this tragedy did not touch uh, United States, if you remember, uh, and uh, role of person in history, it's Casey, and this lady, I think it's a big lady, because uh, she did not give ability uh, and she understood, understood the risk of this drug, and these drugs will not appear, appear in pharmaceutical market in the United States. When we talk about talidomide and bortezomide, are both uses in treatment of multiply myeloma, this drug is uh, uh, contraindicated right now in pregnant women. 
females and as uh, indication is multiplier myeloma higher cumulative doses and longer treatment duration are risk factor for the development of DIPN incidence has been reported uh, between 23 and 70 percent with teledamine treatment up to the sort of patient grade 3 4 and between 37 and 63 is bartizamine treatment with up to the 13 percent grade while both cause a predominantly sensory neuropathy, thalidomide is characterized by prominent paresthesia in the hands and feet along with numbness and mild motor dysfunction. Bortezomide shows distal paresthesia and numbness especially in the lateral limbs along with substantial small C fiber involvement presented as sharp or burning pain in the feet. While the mechanism of pathogenesis appears multifactorial, bortezomide is shown to promote mitochondrial calcium, calcium release leading to apoptosis cascade activation, interference with microtubule stabilization. A recent study by Yen et al. proposes bortezomide induces neuropathy generated from activation of activated transcription factor 3. ATF3 is primarily cultural dorsal root ganglion DRG neurons and DRG is demonstrating in painful peripheral neuropathic rats. Thalidomide's neurotoxicity may be related to antigenetic activities among other potential mechanisms. Hemotherapeutic agents epitelons. Epitelons such as Ixaber Ix Ixaber Pilon are used in treatment of advanced breast cancer as well as refractory prostate cancer. These factors for the development of DIPN include dose per treatment cycle, duration of infusion and cumulative dose. The neuropathy is predominantly sensor and cumulative in all grade incidence ranges from 15% in the neo divan setting to 64% with monotherapy for the treatment of metastatic breast cancer. The mechanism of pathogenesis is unclear, but the neurotoxicity profile is similar to that of other microtubule stabilizing agents such as toxins. Hemotherapeutic agents arsenic trioxides. Arsenic trioxides are toys often used in treatment of acute promyelocytic uh, pro leukemia, while highly effective peripheral neuropathy is notable side effect of auto treatment is IPL patient population. In recent retrospective analysis, the cumulative incidence of peripheral neuropathy was found to be 10.3% following autotherapy. The neuropathy has been characterized as both mild and reversible by sensory and motor polyneuropathy as been observed chronically. The pathogenesis is not well understood, but findings of acute axonal damage with demyelinization have been reported previously in addition to associations with TMI deficit states. Hemotherapeutic agent toxins. Toxin compounds like paclitaxel and docetaxel have been utilized for advanced ovarian and breast cancer and associated with DPN via the protein kinase, extracellular signal regulator kinase pathway in the spinal cord in lumbar segments 4.6 and dorsal root ganglia. Increasing frequency C and dose as well as the cumulative dosing increases the risk of toxin induced DAPN, but most patients show symptom improvement of complete resolution after six months, with the exception of the more severe cases. The incidence of DAPN was found to be 30% when uh, paclitaxel was administered as single agents in the treatment of ovarian cancer, the incidence decreased to 6%. However, 
The incidence of DAPN has been reported up to the 70% with the addition of platinum chemotherapy to paclitaxel. Also, as primary sensory neuropathy, several cases have included motor deficits. Taxan compounds interfere with metabolic calcium signaling, subsequently inter interfering with tubulin depolymerization in the neuronal axons. Pac Paclitaxel has also been shown to alter sensory axon and neural glial function with the dorsal root ganglion. We will see. We will talk about neurotoxicity and uh, in this lecture I will shortly pay attention and next one I will talk about more widely. Uh, widely. Uh, neurotoxicity associated with aminoglycosid and beta lactam the mechanism of neurotoxicity and risk factors. If you see that uh, aminoglycosid can include uh, several drugs intermedicine, streptomycin, amicacin, tabramycin, almycin, canamycin Medicine. Number of publications, retrospective case reviews, case uh, reports, a neurotoxic effect, autotoxic class effect, uh, peripheral neuropathy, encephalopathy, intermedicine, neuromuscular blockade class effect, mechanism of neurotoxicity, activation of NMDA receptors, lysosomal abnormality, axonal loss, inflammatory response, inhibition of presynaptic one to release of acetylcholine and binding of rhodopo synaptic receptor. This factor increase in the central nervous system permeability intratecal administration. Better luck times you see higher risk agents is cefazoline, cefazolis, cefazidine, cefaperoxone, cefatim, and low risk agents cefaxin, cefataxin, ceftrioxone. Uh, case reports, retrospective reviews, review articles can uh, be development in cephalopathy with uh, triplastic ways of EEG, uh, tardive seizure, seizures, myoclonus, and asterexis. It's central pathology, but when we're talking about neurotoxicity, I touch this topic right now too. Inhibition of GBA are release increases glutamate induction of endomatoxin, cytokine release, and risk factors is renal failure, prior senior disease, older age, excess disease. Better lactam penicillin and benzene penicillin, uh, piperzillin, ticacillin, ampicillin, amoxicillin, oxacillin. Remember this effect about uh, this group has and liver injury can be caused too. And we're talking about neurotoxicity case reports, case series. Just remind you, seizures, uh, uh, third dive seizures, encephala. Uh, encephalopa and tremors. Uh, mechanism neurotoxicity of this group beta lactams is inhibition of GBA receptors and risk factors, serenal failure, low birth weight, neonatase. Beta lactams is carbapenems. Its group uh, include imapenem, meropenem, parinapenem, ertapenem, doripenem, ceftatoline. Case reports is number of publication. Neurotoxic effect is seizures, myoclonus, headaches, and can be encephalopathy to cause off. A mechanism of neurotoxicity inhibitors of GBA receptors, possibly binding of glutamate, and risk factors, it can be risk, uh, renal failure. This different group, uh, zero tetracyclines, review article cases, neurotoxic effect, cranial nerve toxicity, neuromuscular blockade, intracranial hypotension, can be tremtorin, sulfatamazole, case reports, neurotoxic effect, transient psychosis, cephalopathy, aseptic meningitis, uh, central nervous penetration, advancing age in a monocompromised group, macrolide, remember about all uh, um, arrhythmia, 
uh, and uh, it's uh, claritromycin, erythromycin, chemiazitromycin. Uh, in this case, it's neurotoxicity, it's autotoxicity, damage of cochlea, and you sh uh, should remember that it's enough serious adverse reaction to quinolone, ciprofloxacin, afloxacin, afloxacin, hemofloxacin, levofloxacin, case reports, case series. Neurotoxic effects of allopathy, say, on CBS. Uh, or a facial dyskinesia, action myoclonus, ataxia, dysartria, even horea. Remember, it inhibition is a mechanism, mechanism of neurotoxic inhibition, GBA receptors, activation MDA receptors, advanced age risk factors, impaired renal function, increase of permeability of blood-brain barrier. Oxaminolone, linzolid, case reports, cephalopathy, Optic neuropathy, a mechanism of neurotoxic still uh, unknown. Strep uh, streptogramine, dolphoprotein, uh, quinidine, poly uh, polymyxine, uh, calhitsin, colistin. Uh, I want uh, that this group include many incisors, diplopia, taxia, parasthesia, polycephalopathia, misthenia like symptoms and uh, blocking uh, acetyl, uh, acetylcholine receptor, prolonging depolarization, cardio depression, and other. You see that how serious can be adverse react after antibiotics, and we talk now just about uh, um, neurotoxicity, but you remember about, uh, for example, aminoglycosides and um, kidney toxicity, uh, nephrotoxicity, for example, amoxicillin and hepatotoxicity. And uh, why I am now talking about these topics and divide it? Because in future we will uh, this combine this knowledge and we will go from general to special. And I think it will be useful for you too because uh, again one patient can have uh, can has um, di uh, different uh, diseases and can be treated administrated uh, several uh, medicines and this combining and you should understand what cause of this pathological condition uh, may dif a differential diagnosis of it and uh, uh, make assessment uh, of causality between adverse reaction uh, as its adverse reaction uh, and uh, I'm sorry administration of uh, drugs too I will be thankful for your question because uh, we will go close uh, to situation when we will uh, discuss it in our practical classes, practical uh, meeting because uh, I am um, receiving so many questions. I think it's now when it will get a critical volume. I will make these lectures with practical cases discussion and I will be thankful for your feedback and uh, I want that we will uh, col uh, collect all this information, discuss and uh, because in your practical activity you meet uh, and uh, I assure that you do uh, so many interesting cases too and plus um, what I will do again I will make um, uh, and uh, now finishing drug drug interaction drug device interaction and it will be interesting I hope to you too because majority cases of adverse reaction can be uh, from this plus interesting information and pharmaceutical industry know it its formulation and other adverse reaction why it's important because um, uh, for example, uh, we have uh, guidance, for example, in volume uh, 9A and pharmaceutical industry know, and for example, 
Uh, how formulation can be cause of adverse reaction too? It's not active substance, uh, but uh, you still uh, remember. For example, lactose, yes, it's uh, ingredients and it can uh, it's uh, contraindicated uh, for patient with uh, uh, lactose insufficiency. Characteristic of antibiotic related. Um, DIPN. It's like a um, little bit assumed it. Uh, for example, is a niazid. Incidence, uh, you see that 2% 44 is factor alcohol uh, dependence, ma malnutrition, diabetes, GA, elder and pregnant. And uh, you remember about. Uh, um, hepatotoxicity of this uh, drug too pathogenesis interference with vitamin uh, B6 synthesis and what kind of nephropathy sensory peripheral neuropathy Etambutol 118% incidence increasing age as risk factor of peripheral nephropathy prolonged duration of AMB a higher dose hypertension poor renal function diabetes and concurrent optoneuritis related to tobacco and alaka alcohol you see two new risk as can be alcohol and tobacco too pay attention on these risk factors too uh, because when you collect anamnes of life, anamnes of uh, disease, you should uh, collect all information, all habits uh, of your patient. Uh, it's inhalation affected mitochondrial metal containing some enzymes and ex exotoxic pathways is pathogenesis and can be cause of optic neuropathy. Uh, Lines the lead. 20% prolonged treatment and increased doses. Pathogenesis unknown, could be related to protein inhibition and mitochondrial toxicity. Sensory peripheral neuropathy and optic neuropathy can be cause of this condition. And metronidazole uh, is 10 85%. I will talk about metronidazole, metronidazole toxicity, neurotoxicity in my next lecture. So, in this lecture, I will pay attention to risk factors of uh, peripheral nephropathy can be chronic treatments increases dose uh, as a pathogenesis mechanism can be axonal degeneration show to bind a neuronal RNA and type of nephropathy motor and sensory peripheral neuropathy optic and autonomic nephropathy neuropathy drugs class biologicals uh, incidence uh, just 1.3% uh, uh, risk factor dose and duration of drugs incidence rare fever like illness uh, to little to uh, tumor necrotic factors alpha pathogenesis uh, T cell and humoral immune attack of peripheral myelin vasculitis induces nerve ischemia and inhibition of oxygen signal you see uh, signs uh, it's um, Julian Barre syndrome, Miller Fisher syndrome, chronic inflammatory demonization, polyneuropathy, meta focal motor neuropathy with conduction block mono neuropathy, multiplex and axonal sensor motor polyneuropathy, interferons, very rare incidence, and is rare, concomitant autoimmune disease injection site of interferon B. Uh, is uh, you remember pegiline interferons can be not pegiline interferons it's treatment of uh, hepatitis you uh, administrate in this group of patients uh, pathogenesis immune mediated myelin degradation vessel occlusion leading to nerve ischemia induction of, of GMA antibodies uh, can be cause of chronic inflammatory demyelinated polyneuropathy acute axonal polyneuropathy demyelinated polyneuropathy vasculitis neuropathy leflonamide 5-10% uh, is in this peripheral neuropathy all the age history of diabetes previously used possibly due to drug induced neurological type of neuropathy distal axonal sensory or sensory motor 
Peripheral neuropathy with nuclear acid, uh, nuclear acid reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Uh, it's uh, agent good RTIs. It can be zalcidobin, uh, didanazide, slavodin, levatudin, uh, you see in synthesis. Uh, risk factors uh, is prior neuropathy, underlying malignancy, D4 count, higher dose combination therapy, metabolic impairment, alcoholic use, inhibition as a pathogenesis, inhibition of uh, gamma DNA uh, polymerase leading to mitochondrial dysfunction, a type of neuropathy, distal axonal type sensory neuropathy. Levodopa. Levodopa 20-45% average in patient without neuropathy, average dose in patient with neuropathy, highest risk dose, more than 1,500 mg per day, higher dose treatment, higher serum, low vitamin, bad, uh, bad well, LGI administration, low BMA, pathogenesis, accumulation of serum, hypocysteine and cobalamide related metabolites, free radical accumulators, axonal time sensory peripheral neuropathy. Triazole uh, uh, is condition risk factors, uh, diabetes mellitus, higher dose treatment, pathogenesis, unclear, possible mitochondrial independent, and type of neuropathy, small fiber, axonal type, predominantly sensory. Levodopa. The risk of development peripheral neuropathy increases with higher doses. This risk is particularly higher doses, higher than 1,500 mg per day. The rate dose in patient on reporting neuropathy was 400 mg per day, while the average dose in patient reporting neuropathy was 700 mg per day. Higher blood concentration of homocysteine and lower levels in vitamin B are also associated with increased risk of peripheral neuropathy. Route of administration affects the incidence of peripheral neuropathy. Levodopa, carbidopa, intestinal cell gel infusion facilitates higher drug slave compared to oral treatment. A lower BME seems to correlate with the high incidence of peripheral neuropathy. The pathophysiology of levodopa induced neuropathy uh, seems to be mediated by the accumulation of serum homocysteine, cobalamin related metabolites, or methyl malonic acid, and decrease in the levels of vitamin B12. Conversion of levodopa to dopamine requires a methyl group from s adenosyl methionine leading uh, to RCA formage, Y formation, remethylation of RCA requires vitamin B12, reducing vitamin B12 levels and decreasing RCA. In eminent studies, levodopa intake was shown to increase serum RCA concentration and free radical accumulation. The peripheral neuropathy seen with levodopa treatment is an axonal type sensory peripheral neuropathy that tends to be mildly symptomatic or even asymptomatic in some cases. On nerve conduction studies, a reduction in neural nerve amplitude has been noted. As all, the reported incidence of peripheral neuropathy in patients treated with azoles is highly varied in literature. The manufacturer's data sheet for the triazole drugs lists peripheral neuropathy as a rare side effect. However, some authors in transplantant patients taken voriconazole and Baxter report incidence rate 9-17% in patients treated with voriconazole and troconazole respectively. The risk of peripheral neuropathy associated with azole therapy seems to be higher in patients with diabetes mellitus, perhaps due to the predisposition or to neuropathy in this population. An increased risk of neuropathy was been associated with higher doses of azoles from 1,050 to 350 uh, from one, uh, so 150 three, uh, 
150 mg however other studies have shown peripheral mineralopathy even when patient are within the therapeutic window the pathophysiology of azole induced peripheral neuropathy is unclear the azole group has been theorized to play a role in the development of peripheral neuropathy however many other drugs that have not been shown to induce peripheral neuropathy include azole groups suggested a mitochondrial dependent mechanism mitochondrial destruction has been implicated in other drug induced neuropathies a possible predisposition may be wide variety of genetic polymorphies in the cytochrome 2 C9 system which metabolize variconazole resulting in wide range of syrup concentration. Car, uh, some uh, authors as Kurt Wright have observed excess accumulation of phospholipids in uh, canine neurons treated with azole. However, this has not been shown to cause peripheral neuropathy in humans. Symptoms of azole-induced peripheral nephropathy include tingling and numbness that resolve after discontinuation of decreased position and vibratory sensation and abnormal EMG. The neuropathy in sensory predominant axonal typically symmetrically small fibers affected the alias. Dear colleagues, uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention. We will continue these topics in neurotoxicity of um, antibiotics and uh, then we will talk about uh, neurotoxicity of... Uh, we today talked about it. I think if I will receive a question, I will talk uh, in next lectures about hemotherapy and neuropathy. Plus, uh, I'm in stage of preparation of cardiotoxicity because I receiving too many questions uh, from medical doctors, physicians, healthcare, and uh, 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 pharmacists. And uh, I will be thankful uh, for your topics. Maybe uh, some talks if you will be interested, and I, I did not pay attention yet. And uh, what I want to do, I want to uh, make an announcement and meet you with my full program because I think it's uh, time to talk about opening a special course of uh, clinical pharmacovigilance which will be very useful uh, for um, two medical doctors, healthcare professionals and uh, pharmacists. Um, and I think even for medical students, because uh, when I analyze that question, for example, in preparation and you simulate if a GM is for improving uh, diploma for United States and Canada, uh, I made this uh, type of question. Plus, it will be useful and for Ukraine and CIS countries too, because uh, we, uh, this country uh, now has uh, steps uh, exams too and uh, this knowledge, uh, plus this knowledge will be useful and first uh, practicals, uh, practi uh, practice and uh, I think that it's time to talk about it too. Uh, thank you very much uh, and um, about pharmaceutical industry still I receive many questions too because uh, for example some companies uh, um, we, uh, we have now um, this in our activities in pharmacovigilance activity but uh, very deep knowledge it's what I talked uh, about it's this topic uh, we should have clinical knowledge we should have clinical experience we should have medical education because and very deep knowledge of clinical pharmacology general pharmacology clinical pharmacology and as you see now it's very important to have clinical pharmacovigilance knowledge thank you very much Th see you in my future lectures uh, please subscribe on my channel youtube channel and leave comments and uh, likes uh, leave likes and uh, in comments you can leave what topics you will interest in and uh, what for example cases you want discuss and thank you very much again and see you later